you ever come across a verse in scripture and wonder, is that really true? I'm not talking about being swallowed by a, a giant fish or, or talking donkeys. I mean something like, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. Or what about the promise? If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. How many of us have, have prayed for things, good God honoring things? And the answer has been no. I'm not suggesting that our experience invalidates God's word. I'm merely suggesting that, that some passages might not be as straightforward as they seem. One passage that I've often had trouble with is found in John 14. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus says, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. And they will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. It makes me want to say, are you sure, Jesus? I mean, you fed thousands, healed untold numbers, raised Lazarus from the dead. We're going to do even greater works than you? It's an astonishing statement. And actually, that it seems to be exactly what's happening in the book of Acts. Chapter 5, Luke tells us, The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. And the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared to join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns and around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. It's pretty impressive. The crowds were gathering, bringing the sick and demon-possessed to receive healing, which sounds exactly like what we find happening in, with Jesus in the Gospels. They were doing the works Jesus did. But what about the promise that we would do even greater works? Well, one could argue that while touching the corners of Jesus' cloak could lead to healing, only Peter's shadow had to fall on someone that they might be healed. That sounds greater, doesn't it? Now, the key to all of this is found uh, in, in verse 14. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. Doesn't say more and more people believed in Peter. While it was Peter's shadow that was falling on them, it was the Lord that they believed in. I mean, this could have gone sideways really quickly. Very quickly, people could have begun putting their faith in Peter rather than Jesus. But Peter and the disciples continued to point beyond themselves to Jesus, to his power and his presence. Greater work for Peter didn't mean a greater name for himself, but greater glory for Jesus. I wonder if perhaps that's the limiting factor for some of us. We want to perform great works. We want to do great things for God. But maybe deep down it's because we want the glory for us and not for him. I pray that would not be the case. May we be the kind of people whose lives cause no confusion, that our acts of love and generosity, the gifts we have and the, even the blessings we receive, that all of it would point clearly back to its source and that he would receive the glory. Have a blessed week, church.